Good, mo good, morning. good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our uh, family slash contemporary service. We're glad you're here. And uh, I'm just going to turn it over to the musicians to get us started. It all comes down to this What you require of me Love my neighbor as myself And you above all things Act justly Love mercy more complete with you, God, in no ways, in no ways, more complete with you, God, it all comes down to this, to be your hands and feet, good news to all the world, the truth will set us free. Justly, love mercy, walk calmly with you, God. In no ways, in no ways, walk calmly with you, God. It's beautiful ashes, it's morning to dancing, it's closer and closer, the kingdom of heaven. It's beautiful ashes, the morning to dancing, it's closer. From the book of Baruch. Take off the garment of your sorrow and affliction, O Jerusalem, and put on forever the beauty of the glory from God. Put on the robe of the righteousness that comes from God. Put on your head the diadem of the glory of the everlasting. For God will show your splendor everywhere under heaven. For God will give you evermore the name, righteous peace, godly glory. Arise, O Jerusalem, and stand upon the height. Look toward the east. And see your children gathered from west and east at the word of the Holy One, rejoicing that God has remembered them. For they went out from you on foot, led away by their enemies, but God will bring them back to you, carried in glory as on a royal throne. For God has ordered that every high mountain and the everlasting hills be made low, and the valleys filled up to make level ground, so that Israel may walk safely in the glory of God. The woods and every fragrant tree have shaded Israel at God's command, for God will lead Israel with joy in the light of his glory, with the mercy and righteousness that comes from him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Um, this is the song of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. For, for he, he hath visited and, and redeemed, redeemed his people. And hath raised up a mighty salvation for us. In the, In the house, house of his servant David, David. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets. Which, which have been since the world began. That we should be saved from our enemies. And, and from, from the, the hand, hand of all that, that hate us. us to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers 
and to, and to remember, remember his holy covenant, covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham, that he would give us, that we being delivered out of the hands of our enemies, might, might serve, serve him, him without, without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him, all, all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou for shalt go before the face, face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people, for, for the, the remission, remission of their, their sins. sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. In the fifteenth year of the reign of the Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was the governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip ruler of the region of Ituria and Trachonitis, and Lysanias ruler of Abilene during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas. The word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, pro proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Christ. words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Right. So in our gospel reading this morning, we start out with a, a kind of a litany. In the 15th year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and on and on. We get a listing of seven very powerful people, an emperor, a governor, three tetrarchs, and two high priests. So together, they represent rulers of the known world, the regional lands, and the religious, political, and economic complex that stands at the heart of Jerusalem. So collectively, they hold all the authority and might that wealth, military prowess, or ancestry can command. So I think there's a reason for naming all these powerful people. And it's to make the point that the word of God does not come to any of those influential men of power, nor to the political territories over which they have command. It comes instead to a lone man 
out in the wilderness, John, son of Zechariah. Which means that the story of the incarnation begins in obscurity. It begins in the wilderness. And the wilderness in biblical writings often represents vulnerability and uncertainty. So it's precisely in that wilderness place of vulnerability and uncertainty that God appears. Just as God guided the Israelites by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, God provides what is needed in the wilderness, like the daily manna or a feast for multitudes. The wilderness is where and how God's people learn to depend on God. So perhaps the first lesson about the wilderness today is a lesson about power. I mean, let's look again at how our gospel highlights a, starting, a startling juxtaposition between those who experience God's speaking presence and those who don't. In Luke's account, emperors, governors, rulers, and high priests, the folks who wield power, don't hear God. But the outsider from the wilderness does. So what is it about power that keeps these seven very important people from hearing God? Well, they already have pomp, money, military might, and the weight of religious tradition at their disposal. So they don't seem to need God. But in the wilderness, you know, in the wilderness there is no safety net, there's no plan B, there's no fallback option. In the wilderness, life is raw and risky, and our illusions of self-sufficiency fall apart really fast. So to find ourselves at the outskirts of power is to confess our vulnerability. In the wilderness, we have no choice but to wait and watch, as if our lives depend on God showing up, because they really do. And it's into an environment like this, an environment so far removed from power as to make power laughable, that God chooses to come. Debbie Thomas shares, unless we're in the wilderness, it's hard to see our own privilege and even harder to imagine giving it up. No one standing on a mountaintop wants the mountain flattened. But when we're wandering in the wilderness and immense barren landscapes stretch out before us in every direction, we're able to see what privileged locations obscure. Suddenly we feel the rough places beneath our feet. We experience what it's like to struggle down twisty, crooked paths. We glimpse arrogance in the mountains and desolation in the valleys, and we begin to dream God's dream of a wholly reimagined landscape a landscape where the valleys of death are filled and the mountains of oppression are flattened, a landscape so smooth and straight it enables all flesh to see the salvation of God. So there is a fable called the King's Highway. It has to do with an elderly king who had no heir. So one night he sent his servants out to place a pile of rubble on the road leading to his castle. The next day he sent word that he was in search for a successor to the throne and that whoever best traveled his road would be the next king. Wannabe kings came from far and near. And when they got to the pile of rubble, they grumbled and complained, but somehow they managed to get around it. All the while, the king watched from the castle. Now, it just so happened that there was a young shepherd boy named Michael who also aspired to be king. And his friends just scoffed at when he told them. The king will never pick you, they said. You're nothing but a peasant. But Michael would not be discouraged, and so he headed out to see the king. But when he got to the pile of rubble, he stopped to clear the stones out of the way. And to his surprise, when he got to the bottom of the pile, there was a beautiful gold ring with the king's royal crest. Michael stuck it in his pocket and rushed to the castle. I'm sorry it is so late, Michael whispered as he knelt before the king. And then he reached in his pocket and pulled out the ring for the king to see. I found this on the road, he said. I'm sure it must belong to you. 
The king examined the ring carefully. This ring is not mine, he announced. But it must be yours, Michael said. It bears your crest. Indeed it does, said the king, but it's not mine. It belongs to the one who will be seated on my throne. And then giving the ring back to Michael, he said, it now belongs to you. I proclaimed that he who best traveled the highway would become the new king. By clearing the road so that all may travel safely, you showed that it's not fine clothing, fancy horses, or even great wealth that make a king. True greatness comes through serving others. So the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. May it come to us, too, so like John, we may become hope-filled voices in desolate places, preparing the way of the Lord. Amen. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. Prepare your hearts for his arrival, praying, fill the valleys, make low the hills. Come, great Redeemer, come. Merciful God, increase our love to overflowing. Make your church pure and blameless that we may greet with joy the coming of Lord Jesus Christ. Fill the valleys, make low the hills. Come, come great Redeemer, come. Merciful God, we long for the light of hope to break into our world, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, to guide us into the way of peace. Fill the valleys, make low the hills. Come, great Redeemer, come. Merciful God, give us grace to heed the warnings of those calling us to be better stewards of your creation. We thank you for all you have made, especially those things that sustain and better our lives. Fill the valleys, make low the hills. Come, come, great Redeemer, come. Merciful God, you lead us with joy. You delight in our joy. You clothe us in beauty. We give you thanks for your tender care. At this time, I invite the congregation to add their thanksgivings or their intercessory prayers. I pray for Fran and Carmela. Fill the valleys, make low the hills. Come, great Redeemer, come. Merciful God, you remember your children. You do not leave us in sorrow or affliction. Crown your children with glory. Clothe them with righteousness. Fill the valleys, make low the hills. Come, great Redeemer, come. Merciful God, you have raised up for us salvation through your Son. Keep us with all your saints in the eternal life of Christ. Fill the valleys, make low the hills. Come, great Redeemer, come. And now, let us confess our sins to God. <clears throat> God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. 
Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Good, good morning. Does anyone have any announcements? No? No way. Remember we have breakfast with Santa on Saturday, 10 to noon. Santa's arriving in a very special way. Oh boy. <laughs> so if you come at 10, you have to come and see. <laughs> Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
continue with the great thanksgiving. The Lord is here. God's God's Spirit is with us. us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to offer thanks and praise. It is right indeed. It is our joy and our salvation. Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, at all times and in all places, to give you thanks and praise through Christ, your only Son. You are the source of all life and goodness. Through your eternal word, you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Male and female, you created us. When we sinned and turned away, you called us back to yourself and gave your Son to share our human nature. By his death on the cross, he made the one perfect sacrifice for the sin of the world and freed us from the bondage of sin. You raised him to life triumphant over death. You exalted him in glory. In him you have made us a holy people by sending upon us your holy and life-giving spirit. Therefore, with the faithful who rest in him, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever praising you and singing. glory and thanksgiving to you, Holy Father. On the night before he died, your son, Jesus Christ, took bread. And when he had given you thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this to remember me. After supper, he took the cup. When he had given you thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it to remember me. Glory, Glory to, to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Your, your death, death we show forth. forth. Your, your resurrection, resurrection we proclaim. proclaim. Your, your coming, coming we await. Amen. Amen. Come, Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Therefore, loving God, recalling your great goodness to us in Christ, his suffering and death, his resurrection and ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate our redemption with this bread of life and this cup of salvation. Accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving which we offer through Christ, our great high priest. Send your Holy Spirit that these gifts of bread and wine which we receive may be to us the body and blood of Christ, and that we, filled with the Spirit's grace and power, may be renewed for the service of your kingdom. United in Christ with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, O God, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing, Blessing honor, honor, and glory be yours, here, here and everywhere, everywhere now and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Now as Christ our Savior teaches us, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We We who are many are one body, for we all all share in the one bread. The gifts of God for the people of God. service continues with the post-communion prayer. Loving God, God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people, forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. May Almighty God, by whose providence our Savior Christ came among us in great humility, sanctify you with the light of his blessing and set you free from all sin. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Thirst 
empty soul, I need you. Oh, I need you. Your forgiveness is like sweet, sweet honey on my lips. Like the sound of the symphony in my ears. Like holy Love and serve Jesus Christ, our Savior. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.